It's time now for the Sports Objective Podcast. No talking heads, just guys who love sports. Here's Dave Richmond. Welcome into the Sports Objective Podcast. I'm Bubba Rosenbaum. Well, it's finally here. It is game week as East Carolina football will travel to rival NC State on Saturday for what will be a noon kickoff on the ACC Network before a sold-out crowd at Carter-Finley Stadium. First-year head coach Mike Houston held his initial game week press conference this morning, and our Dave Richmond was on site at Harvey Hall inside the Murphy Center to get the thoughts of Coach Houston, and let's hear those right now. Okay, thanks everybody for being here. Uh, exciting week this week. Finally, game week uh, 2019 is here, and uh, certainly there's been, uh, for not only us, but for every college program around the country, uh, you know, you point to this week uh, for so long, you know, dating back to last winter, uh, all spring and summer, you know, everything revolves around the beginning of the season, and certainly it's an exciting time. Uh, it's a very exciting time here in Greenville. Uh, the, uh, the, the buzz around our program here locally uh, in the city of Greenville and regionally with, uh, you know, Eastern North Carolina is, uh, is something that's very motivating. Uh, I think it's very encouraging to our players. And certainly there's a buzz around, uh, in, you know, our football program and the football offices this week. So uh, got off to a, uh, a good start with a, uh, a very enthusiastic Sunday practice uh, in our first, uh, you know, game prep for NC State this week. Uh, the guys had yesterday off, uh, their NCAA day off. Uh, and then uh, you know, we'll pick back up this afternoon with uh, meetings and practice. So a uh, big week for us. Um, you know, great challenge coming this Saturday. You know, traveling over to Raleigh to face uh, a very good Wolfpack program. Uh, and we, we were able to face uh, Coach Dorn and his team last year in the opener at James Madison. Uh, and I told him before the game, just uh, you know, just watching him and and being familiar with that program and 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 being very familiar with recruiting in the state of North Carolina as we've recruited it everywhere we've been. Uh, I respected very much the job he's done building. Uh, a very solid program there. Uh, the job he's done recruiting in state, uh, and you know the consistency with which they have played at. And so, uh, I know that they had a, a great year last year, uh, going to a bowl game and winning nine games in the ACC. Uh, they did have some graduation on offense. They returned the bulk of their defense back. Uh, they have had some changes on their coaching staff, uh, but as always, I expect to see a very solid roster. And we expect to face one of the better teams in the ACC this Saturday at 12 o'clock uh, for the noon kickoff. So, uh, you know, great opportunity for us. Uh, certainly it'll be uh, the first test that we have and the first opportunity we have to find out exactly where our program is as we start a new era of pi pirate football. So, uh, any questions from the media? Coach, you look at the, the depth chart here, our first look at it. Uh, Noah Henderson and Juan Miller, two freshmen. Set to start, just, uh, especially that right tackle. What kind of stood out with Noah to, to get that? Well, certainly Noah uh, is someone that has the stature. I mean, he's 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 a big human being who is very athletic, uh, and he is someone that's improved greatly uh, since we got here. Uh, and he's had a very solid fall camp. There's been a lot of competition there at that right tickle, at that right tackle position. Uh, you know, but we're confident that Noah has the ability to get the job done. Uh, Jaquan, uh, you know, really he's been, you know, he's been a big positive since we got here. Uh, you know, he was someone that, uh, you know, had a lot of other opportunities in the recruiting process, uh, but was was fairly solid with East Carolina when I got the job. We worked very hard to solidify that. Uh, his high school coach and I go back uh, all the way back to my days of coaching high school football at T.C. Robertson. And so certainly uh, I think that relationship helped because, you know, Adrian knows knows me personally, knows how I'm going to treat the players, so he knew what kind of environment Jaquan would be in. Uh, but he has been, um, you know, everything we could have asked for. Uh, he's a great competitor, a uh, very talented player, uh, and I think plays uh, with a lot more composure uh, than the typical freshman that you would see. Right. You know, we did, we did kind of anticipate that he was going to be the one. Uh, you know, we've watched a film of him from last year. I know that he didn't play a ton last year, uh, but still, uh, he was impressive in the, in the in the opportunities he had to get in, get in different games along the way. Uh, we watched the spring game pretty closely. 
Uh, the thing that stands out to me, number one, he is a, a, a legitimate dual threat guy, uh, very athletic, runs well. Um, you know, as far as him as a passer, uh, you know, you can see why. You can you can see from the spring game why uh, you know they like him. He has a very quick release, uh, compact uh, throwing motion, uh, throws with good accuracy. So you put him in uh, an offense like that. Uh, you know, he has the ability to run it. He has the ability to throw in the RPO game. So uh, I'm sure they feel like he gives them the best opportunity to win with all the other weapons that they have around him on the offensive side. Announced that the game was a sellout. Uh, big it's exciting. Yeah. Is there a better way to start out an error, I guess? Yeah, in Dowdy Thickland with a sellout. That would be the perfect way to start it out. So, outside of that, you know, to be against uh, uh, an opponent that, uh, uh, that I do think both fan bases consider a rivalry um, and a sellout crowd uh, in the opener, it's going to be a hostile environment. Uh, I like that. Uh, our teams in the past over the years have played well in those kinds of environments. Uh, hopefully we'll have this team prepared to play well uh, this Saturday, but it'll be an exciting venue. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's what you prepare for. That's, what, that's why you coach, that's why you play. You, know, you, you, get, you get excited for games like this. So uh, we're looking really forward to it. Are you nervous at all outside of it? I will be, but uh, you know, you're, all, you're always nervous to a degree, but at the same time, so those, those jitters are more anticipation. Um, you know, we've put a lot of work in. We've got we've got a lot uh, we've got a lot invested so far. But you know, we want to you know really get an opportunity to see just exactly where we are. You know, we, we, we think we have certain things that we're going to do well. Uh, but you know, until you, until you face an opponent, and especially you know one that's as talented as what NC State is, um, there is a little bit of a no. But uh, we're excited to get out there and play, and yeah, I'm sure. You know, as we stand in the tunnel there, uh, you know, right at the end of the uh, end zone, getting ready to take the field on Saturday, there'll be a lot of nerves. Uh, but most of those nerves are going to be excitement and anticipation and, and just ready to go out there and play. Can you look at your group in the secondary? Um, talk about the progress that they've made so far coming into this first game. Well, I think any time uh, you're installing a new system, uh, you know, it takes some time to learn to gel together, especially on the back end. Uh, you know, obviously we have about as much as experience as you're going to ever find anywhere with Coach Trot uh, and his background coaching secondaries and, and, uh, and putting together defenses. And so, uh, you know, his knowledge has been a benefit to not only uh, those players back there, but also to Coach Lynch. Uh, you know, Coach Lynch and I date back to the beginning of his coaching career. And the first thing I told him whenever I took over the program is, you know, this is someone that you can learn a lot from and develop and continue to grow as a, as a position coach. And so I think uh, you know them working together with uh, the combination of young and uh, older players that we have there in the secondary that come a long way since uh, since the beginning. Coach, you've got a reputation for some pretty passionate pregame speeches. Uh, you thought about it all, but you say no. some that just come. Uh, you know, and, and you know those things really are a culmination of you know what. What the team and I talk about throughout the week. You know, they're not really scripted. I, I, I talked to somebody the other day and they were asking about it. I said, there's been one uh, in my past that was kind of choreographed and it was uh, kind of a special situation right there and a, a special set of circumstances. But, uh, you know, they're all, they're all built on just kind of some themes from the week. Uh, most of them revolve around how we want to play a certain ball game. Uh, there's a certain Certain uh, you know game plan, there's a certain identity that we want to establish in that game. Whatever it is, uh, those very much come from the heart. So uh, you know it'll be an exciting time. First time in the locker room with our team. Uh, you know we have, we're gonna have a lot of firsts, and uh, you know hopefully we have some uh, uh, some positive things to really pull from uh, coming out of this game. Coach, what will Friday and Saturday be like as far as travel? We'll, uh, you know, we'll get together about midday Friday, and we'll do our walk through the meetings here uh, before we head over to uh, to Raleigh. Um, and we'll get there, you know, about an hour or so before dinner, and then we have some meetings post dinner. I do want to get the kids in uh, in bed pretty early uh, Friday night with a 12 o'clock kickoff, because uh, Saturday morning when they wake up, it's going to come pretty fast, and you get pregame meal at 8 a.m. Uh, so, uh, you know, that kind of that, that's that, that tells you, you know, exactly how quickly you got to wake up and be ready to go. So, you know, they've got to be fairly prepared to play Friday night, uh, and we'll work on that throughout the week. And uh, you know, I've been over kind of, you know, 
with the with the players, kind of how we want to want them to prepare both mentally and physically throughout the week. It's not something you just flip a switch on Friday. It's a preparation that starts on Sunday, but really you know kicks into gear today. Um, but it'll be a you know it'll be a fast morning Saturday morning, but it'll be an exciting one. What about the key test part of that? It's a new kick. Week one is that. How do you prepare for that? Is it is it just kind of play out Saturday afternoon as far as depth of hydration? Uh, you better prepare for it, you know. And so it's something we do have a lot of experience with. Uh, you know, coaching in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, we had to deal with it uh, just about year round. Uh, and so I thought we were very well prepared last year at James Madison going into that game. You know, thinking back, we had two players that had some minor cramping issues in the second half, uh, but really our roster handled it pretty well. Uh, we've tried to do a good job preparing throughout preseason camp. I think the afternoon practices last week and this week will help prepare the players for the heat. Uh, we do have a little bit of a calmer kind of climate right now. Uh, this week, and it's not looking quite as hot uh, on Saturday as what we had last year for the kickoff. Uh, but even that being said, first game jitters, uh, you know, guys get amped up for the first game, so you, that that then you know that sometimes complicates some of the uh, dehydration stuff. So uh, we have a system uh, for our guys to have a hydrate Thursday, Friday going in. We have hydration testing on Friday before our team meetings. And then anybody that's underhydrated has a, a specific prescription for the next 24 hours to make sure that they're well hydrated prior to kickoff. Coach, ECU will be successful Saturday, and what happens? I think if we, you know, in a one statement kind of deal, if we do the things that good football teams do, and, and in saying that, you know, what that means, and I'll define it for the players Sunday, you know, in, in opening games, turnovers, penalties, special teams. And, and big mistakes, you know, those are the things that, uh, you know, you'll see sometimes when you see a sloppy performance in an opener. Uh, so it's, a, it's really got to be the point of emphasis this week in practice. And that's what we talked about as a staff this morning. We've got to do a great job of ball security this week, uh, really be on it execution wise. Both sides have great communication, both on the offensive front, quarterbacks, receivers, running backs, back end on the defense. You know, we've got to be really sound with our run fits. Uh, you know, we've got to really do a great job this week uh, with a special teams phase. You know, their punt returner, Thayer Thomas, you know, he had a, a solid game against us last year. Uh, I think he is a, you know, a very dynamic returner back there. He averaged almost 10 yards of return last year. We've got to do a good job keeping him bottled up. Uh, so it's just doing the things that good football teams do, uh, but there's a lot that goes into that. For your players that were a part of last year's game finale, would you rather forget about that because it's obviously too Or do you want them to remember how they felt at the end of that game? Tournament? I think a little of both. I mean, how can you not be motivated by that? Uh, every year is a new year, and every team is a new team. And certainly, this team and this program is at a different point uh, than it was last December. Uh, you know, their program is too. Uh, you know, because each year, uh, you know, what you did in the past is kind of out the window. Um, so I hope that uh, I hope that they never forget what that feels like because you know that can be a motiv motivating factor as well. Uh, you know I think they have a, an opportunity to, to go out and show what they truly are. I think we have an opportunity to go out and show that uh, that's not how our program is going to be identified or remembered. Uh, but certainly you know there's a there's a big challenge in front of us Saturday. Uh, so they've uh, you know they've got to forget how they played. Uh, they got to forget kind of uh, you know the, the identity of that team in the past and, and got to really embrace what we are and what we're trying to become. Given that it's the first week, as far as offensive play calling, will you script the whole lot going into it or kind of see how the you know, first quarter or so plays it out? You know, we've done it both ways in the past. You know, Donnie will have the first couple of plays kind of where he wants to go direction wise, but. Uh, you know, after that, the situation and, and uh, you know, the style of game that it turns out to be is really going to dictate a lot of that stuff. Uh, and as I've said many times, you know, right now we don't know for sure how they're going to try to defend us. Uh, we think we know uh, based on our research and, uh, and what we've uh, seen from them in the past. But, you know, there's been an entire, you know, it's been eight and almost nine months uh, since we've seen anything from that program, uh, you know, on film against another opponent. So, uh, you know, we got to kind of see how they're going to try to defend us as far as, uh, you know, what direction we go with the play calling. Coach, how long is it to run the football and control the clock? 
Well, I think both of us, uh, as far as coaches go, have uh, you know kind of a mindset of we want to be able to control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. I mean, you look at uh, you know Coach Dorn's had a lot of success, uh, and his teams have have always been able to run the football effectively. They've had three straight years of uh, one thousand yard rushers there. Uh, and they've always been solid against the run defensively. So uh, I think that's something that we want to do. It's something that they want to do. So you're kind of going to have a, a clash of titans to a degree from that standpoint. Uh, but I do think it's uh, very important for us to be balanced. Uh, I think in order for us to throw the ball effectively, we're going to need to run the ball effectively and, uh, and, and vice versa on defense. You know, I think we're going to have to do a great job uh, of, of stopping their run or slowing them down in order to have an effective, uh, effective day on that side of the ball. Those special teams always seem to play a role in these types of games. I know you're very confident in Jake Perry. Have you figured out maybe or will it be a game day kind of decision of where and how far you trust him? I think that Jake is very, very talented, and I think uh, a lot of that depends on uh, a lot of different factors. Uh, what point in the ball game is it? Uh, you know, what's the situation? Uh, you know, weather conditions, things like that. But Jake does have, um, you know, really good range and very good accuracy, so he does give us a legitimate weapon. Coach, you talk a lot about the receiver competition all preseason. What kind of allowed the guys, at least for the stars there, to get that spot? Well, I think uh, a combination, a little bit of, you know, you look at them, they're all guys that are, uh, you know, a little bit older. Uh, you know, Blake's, uh, you know, redshirt sophomore, but still he's been in the program for, for a couple of years now. Uh, but I think those guys uh, that are slated there as the starters were the ones that were the most consistent uh, throughout preseason camp. And uh, certainly when we got here in the spring, there was some inconsistency uh, with, with a couple of them. But I think uh, you look at them as a whole, they're the guys that were, were there every day, practiced every day, uh, you know, caught the ball consistently, blocked consistently, uh, worked consistently. Uh, and so I think it's just a culmination of uh, what they put together during preseason camp. Anyone else? Thank you, Coach. Okay, thanks a lot. Looking forward to Saturday. Go Pirates. Here at the press conference for NC State, here's Brandon Pena. We're going to go up there now. Um, I mean, definitely, we're definitely, we're, we're a different mindset, you know, different coach, different, different, um, sorry, yeah, different, um, different goals, but, but we still think about last year, we, we want, we want revenge, I mean, it's, it's that simple, we want revenge, and, and we want to, we want to change things. What's the one memory that you have from last year's game that nauseous you? Walking off the field, seeing, seeing defeat in people's eyes, especially the seniors, I mean, I didn't know if I was coming back at that point, so I, I was, I was definitely, I was, I was sad. I mean, seeing, seeing, seeing some of my teammates, so definitely that, that, that moment. Brandon, early, but you look at last year's team, where your team is right now. Um, what's the biggest change? Um, everything. I mean, I think mentally, it, we're just definitely a different team mentally. Physically, we are too, but we have a different mindset, and we're, we're all on the same page. What about Coach Houston talking about the atmosphere and expect for Saturday? Why is your thing was such a unique kind of situation? Yeah. Not that it was dead, it was kind of an eerie at times, crowd and stuff. What do you expect Saturday just as far as that? Yeah. I mean, I, th I think it will be a hostile environment. I mean, I did see the group was sold out. I mean, I know there's going to be a lot of ECU fans there. I mean, it's not both teams are owned up at this time. So, I mean, we're. I think it's going to be hostile, it's going to be tough, it's going to be loud, but we're ready for it. Brandon, how good is the offensive line? How much you, are you guys improved? I think we've improved a lot. I think um, one thing you've seen this year that you haven't seen in the past year is competition. There's a lot of competition everywhere. I mean, the left side of the line, those, those are some solid guys, but other than that, there's competition. Even at my position, even at both um, right guard and right tackle, there's, there's a lot of competition, and that only makes it better. This is where you win football games, is in the trenches. How much pressure is put on you guys up front to perform well so that this team can be successful? Uh, there's always a lot of pressure. Definitely there's always a lot of pressure just from, from anything. I mean, whether you run the ball, pass the ball, it all comes down to the offensive line. Whether you win or lose, it comes down to the offensive line. They think it's just a position that it comes with the territory. Any difference walking for left-handed quarterback versus right-handed quarterback? Um, no, I don't think there, there, there's a difference blocking the left-handed and the right-handed quarterback. I think there is a difference when you got a quarterback and you can run like home 
he scrambles a lot, so it makes it a little tough. You got to think on the blocks a little different, but those are good problems. Brandon Anderson was the starting today. Maybe don't know a whole lot about him. How is he as a lineman to you know, what do you think made him do that job? Um, he's a guy, day one since he came uh, last half in 2018, and I noticed that he pays attention. He, uh, he's not a guy that you have to repeat things to. He's, um, he has a lot of upside, he's young, but I don't know who would play that position is experience young, but he has a lot of upside, he has a lot of athletic ability. I, I think he gives me It's a great competition. I mean, I, I've mentioned it multiple times, he's on the great friends. Um, it, he pushes me every day. I mean, there was, there's a good portion of the whole preseason, whole summer. We didn't know. We don't know who's going to start at center. Um, he's a great player, and I feel like we've both gotten better from this competition. You're responsible for running calls and stuff. Yes. What do you expect? Come straight at you, or they try to stun a lot. I think. Um, I think that. I think they will try to stun a lot. I mean, they're. they're they're, they have depth at the DM position. Um, they have a lot of returning guys, so we don't we don't exactly know what's going to happen. They, they, they have new uh, coaches on defense too, so we don't know what to expect. But we're ready for any front that they want to put at us. Right. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. That wraps up today's game week press conference coverage. And remember, you'll be able to find that weekly moving forward every Tuesday on our SoundCloud platform. Remember, folks, on Thursday morning, we will be releasing our in-depth preview for NC State as we caught up with former Pack quarterback and longtime color analyst on the Wolfpack Network, Johnny Evans, as well as the voice of Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, Morgan Ehlers. We're also wrapping up our 50 Pirates in 50 Days feature, and you can access all of those interviews via SoundCloud and YouTube. Remember to follow us on Twitter at TheSportsOBJ, on Instagram at The Sports Objective, like and follow us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening to The Sports Objective Podcast, the unofficial podcast of the East Carolina Pirates. You've been listening to The Sports Objective Podcast. Join us next time as the guys will be objective, and the objective is sports.